in terms of growing up and having any Native traditions meshed with the African American traditions, I would have to say that the primary focus in those days, as I am that age, was just surviving the, the throes of the civil rights movement that we were undergoing at that time. There was always reminders that, yes, we have this ancestry, but the, the focus was on the Voting Rights Act, the civil rights marches. I actually grew up in Washington, D.C. So we were at the apex of all of this energy. What I do remember is various kinds of teas and ointments that would be given to me when I was ill as a child. And I was told that this is something that my great-grandmother would do for my mom and her siblings when they were sick. And that great-grandmother was a Cherokee woman. The way I define my identity in, relation, in relation to the race question of being black, native, or a mixture of, of in between, um, I predominantly would define myself as being Shamir. <laughs> However, I do believe both sides of my culture have a huge impact on who I am. I am seen at face value as being black, and I, I love my dark skin. I love some of the protection it affords me, but culturally I'm also native. It's been passed on to me. Um, I speak some of the Tata language. I dabble loosely. I've been dancing for a long time, and those things do impact me. But there, as far as like as it goes for my life, there's no real distinction as to what's black and what's native. But my parents are of black native descent, so when it came to cooking, learning things, I was never really taught the label of what is black and what's native to me until I actually went to school. We were asking, oh, what race are you, what race are you, like, where are you from, and something like that. And then I didn't have to think about it until then. So for the most part, it wasn't really a big thing. But then the more time goes by, the more I see and meet people, I always have to identify myself as being both of those things. And there, there has been backlash for identifying as one or the other. Um, I've had people who are black saying, you know, you're just using the whole native part as being a, a qualifier to better yourself than other black people. And then there are natives who are like, no, you should just accept yourself for being, just be, for, for being solely native or just being solely black. There's no point in, in like straddling the, the racial boundaries, so to speak. I was born in Knoxville, Tennessee, of a family that is uh, both African and native descent. They would often talk when I was a little girl about uh, the native presence in the family, but I wasn't too interested in it uh, in my earlier years because I've always been very African-centric and I thought, well, black people want to embrace the native and leave the African in the closet. So I wasn't too interested for many years, even though it was there and there would be stories of both our African and our native uh, lineage. But then, um, as I grew older, I started to think about my uh, great-grandmother, Ida, my grandfather's mother. And I started to say to her, you know, Mama Ida, I'm no longer going to ignore your side of my family. I'm going to embrace you and I'm going to learn about you as well as the African history I've been studying all my life. Well, growing up um, in the 60s here in California, um, I grew up in a predominantly African-American community and I remember going out and playing with my friends and I would get teased for not being black enough and they would tease me for the straightness, curliness of my hair, my skin color, my facial features, and I would run home crying to my parents and saying, uh, my friends saying I'm not black, what am I? And uh, trying to, in the 60s, understanding that if I go out into the world, when a white person looks at me, they're going to say, one drop rule, I'm black. So my parents taught me, you are black. And they kept instilling that in me. Well, I'm like, okay, but my friend's saying I'm not black. And so I was confused and it didn't really answer my questions, but my parents did their best to, you know, instill you know, pride in who I was. It wasn't, it wasn't until when my father's mother came to visit and she would come and um, get in the kitchen and I called her, 
call myself a little helper, although I've probably gotten away more than helping. But I remember asking her, well, who is my father? Who, who am I? And she told me, well, you're black and Indian. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, that makes sense. So then I, for the next many, many years, I grilled her on my Native American heritage. So it was from her um, that I learned who I was and who my ancestors were. And um, one of the important things is um, that I stand on the shoulders of those who have come before me. And it's important to know and understand who those individuals were because they lived, fought, and died in order to give their children's children's children a better existence, a better life. So I'm very proud of knowing who they are. Um, my grandmother was not Native American. She was married to one, but he wouldn't talk. And uh, we called him the tight lip engine. And so all the information came from her. And with that information, I've been able to document and verify all that she said and gone back through, through history and, and to learn more about my ancestors. Mm -hmm.